Today's video was sponsored by James Washira, a true patriot and a Kenyan nationalist at heart. Ali Hassan Joho has been away from this country for quite some time. And being Ray Lodinga's immediate deputy, serving next to Weekly for Paranya, that could almost certainly not go unnoticed. And since the election, he has been away from this country. He only came back briefly for a day or two. He met with Raila and Junette Mohammed, then he disappeared. And at that point, the narrative as to why he was out of the country was everywhere. The people who said he went for further studies. I saw others saying that he was taking his time off as a civilian to just enjoy life. And others were saying he was just avoiding the fracas that Raila Odinga was causing in the country. He didn't want to be a part of that. But now Ali Hassan Joe has spoken. He is claiming that he has been sick all along and that he was abroad for medication. And that is why he's been away for so long. But finally, he has returned to the country and he's just now still recovering. Here's the tip. Let it be known, first of all, I have been unwell. I have uh, gone through some surgery. I am recovering. And that is the only reason as to why you haven't seen me uh, where you're supposed to see me. Now, is Joho telling the truth? that his health is the reason why he's been out of this country for this long? And why should anyone buy that story considering he is just now coming back into the country during the time of parliamentary bipartisan discussions? That is what I want us to look into in this story, why he was away for so long and why he's back just now. But before we get into that, if you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube, search for David Wafula, hit the subscribe button, and you're gonna be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really, really need to subscribe to. Now, the first reason why Joho was out of this country, according to him, is because of Medicare. And it actually makes sense. If you look at his travel pattern, he was in Dubai. At some point, he was in uh, America. At some point, he went to Mecca. He claims he has been ailing. We don't know ailing from what. But if that is the truth, we honestly wish him all the best. Health is not a small matter. It's actually the most important thing that you can guard in this lifetime. Play with it. You deduct 30, 40 from your life. Take care of it and you add the same to your lifespan. And also, if you look at his travel pattern, it could corroborate the story. He was in Dubai, left to America. At some point, we saw him in Mecca. So perhaps he went and saw a specialist in Dubai. Maybe that didn't yield any dividends. He, he was uh, referred to America to see somebody else. And maybe he went to Mecca to pray over his own uh, condition and other issues. And to that end, we wish him all the best. But because this is politics, we can't take things at face value. We always have to dive deeper to find out the other reasons that seem to be catalyzing some of these movements. And that leads us to the second reason why Ali Hassan Joho was out of this country. In my opinion, it could have also been a financial move. How so? Through the port deal that his family received. Allow me to just read you this article if you're not acquainted with a multi-billion port deal that Ali Hassan Joho received. This is an article from Business Daily done on November 30th, 2022, and it reads, A logistics firm linked to the family of former Mombasa Governor Ali Hassan Joho was awarded a contract on concessionary terms to operate at the taxpayer-funded inland cargo terminal, which is based in Nairobi in 2018, based on the forgeries of board resolutions by the then-acting Kenya Railways Cooperation Managing Director, the Auditor General says in a special audit report. Autoports Freight Terminal Limited has sought to be given concessionary lease terms after being allowed to set up the Nairobi Freight Terminal, similar to those awarded months earlier to Grain Bulk Handlers Limited, which was setting up its own facility in Athi River. So because of that deal, we suspect that's why Ali Hassan Joho left this country. He's a very smart guy. He understood very well that they lost the election. And staying in the country and arguing that you won the election and going on to protest and vandalize people's things was only going to attract a negative reaction from the government. That's why if you pay close attention, some of the biggest critics of this government, they went down under. David Murade went silent. Atuoli switched allegiance and then went radio silent. Junette went radio silent. Even Rafael Tuju went radio silent although that is still not helping him he has a lot of woes i've seen that uh, a property worth one or two billion has been 
has been recovered from him by the bank because of defaulting on a loan. And Joho decided he needs to be part of that group. The group that is staying radio silent and away from national politics to avoid being the subject of any form of attacks. He had too much on the line. They are making so much money from that pot. More money than Ray Lodinga can give him to participate in Mandamano. So if you weigh the options, he saw it best to just leave the country under whatever pretext, be it academia, be it Medicare, or just him enjoying life as a civilian. Which leads us to the final question. Why is he back in this country, just now during the time of parliamentary bipartisan discussions? That is a very peculiar timing. Now the first reason is that in the past general election, there is a lot of money that was dished out. It is even rumored that Kalonzo Musioka dropped his presidential bid for a sum of 5 billion Kenya shillings. And that is why he is building 5 star hotels all over Mumbai. Because in politics, everyone has a price. There is money that you can never say no to. Five billion at the age that he's at, he can spend a million every day until he dies. So a lot of money was dished out in the last election, and now they are going to the table for parliamentary bipartisan discussions. Kenya Kwanza has already ruled out the thing of Nusum Kate. In fact, even if it was on the discussion table, what positions do they have to give? They have nothing. All the CS positions have been filled, all the PS positions, all the CS positions. I don't even think there is a vacancy for any chief position. So the only thing that Kenya Kwanza has to offer is the office of the opposition leader and perhaps the office of the deputy opposition leader. Maybe it will be one, maybe they'll uh, iron it out and have it become two deputies so that Kalonzo and Martha Karua can be there. But other than that, the only other thing that Kenya Kwanza can bring to the table is a financial package. They have nothing else to give that won't haunt them in the ballot. It's either it's the office of the opposition leader and the deputy opposition leader or a financial package which has to of course be handed over covertly and I think they would be foolish to give that amount of money because it will be weaponized by Azimio and the electorate will not be happy to find out that the same government which was saying no Nusumkate is secretly handing over billions to make the opposition keep quiet. But either way, these are things which people in the opposition are starting to anticipate. If you look at it closely, people like Charity Ngilu are now crawling out of the woodwork. They've been away for so long. But during these talks, they're somehow back. I've seen her speaking on one or two podia. Once again, Ali Hassan Joho is back in the country because there could be their own form of the opposition national cake, which might be shared very soon. And I hope that is not going to be the case. Now, the second reason why Ali Hassan Joho is back in this country, it is to do with 2027. In all honesty, in 2027, with Ray Lodinga out of the race, there will be only three people in this country who will be prominent enough to take on President William Ruto, not necessarily to beat him, but to mount a serious challenge. One of those is Kalonzo Musioka. There is also Martha Karua, though I think she would be a terrible candidate. And then we have Ali Hassan Joho. Personally, I see a Kalonzo ticket with Ali Hassan Joho deputizing him. And Joho also knows this. Politically, he outranks Oparanya, all these other people that you can think of within the opposition. Even Matiangi. Joho outranks Matiangi 100% as far as politics is concerned. Because much as Joho doesn't have tribal backing to his side, he doesn't come from any of the major communities, he has coastal backing. With Joho on the ballot as a deputy, the entire coastal region votes will be locked. Over 70% will go to Joho. And that is something that Martha Karua cannot offer. So in my opinion, Joho has been advised to just make his way back into the country, especially during the bipartisan talks, because this could be a prerequisite for him to deputize anybody in 2027. It's just like war. If your country is in war, there are major battles that if you miss, you can never become a five-star general. There are wars that you need to be present. And this is one of them, and that is why he's back in the country, specifically for 2027 politics. Personally, I think he's a great candidate to deputize Kalonzo Musioka, but as usual, guys, that's just my opinion. Do drop me your own comments in the comment section below. I'll do my best to read them and to give you a response. Now, in the event you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube, search for David Wafula, hit the subscribe button, and you're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really, really need to subscribe to. All right, guys. Adios.